We're comfortable now with the idea that chiral objects or molecules can distinguish between enantiotopic groups. In other words, the energetics of reaction of one or the other of a pair of enantiotopic groups are different when a chiral molecule is involved. But how exactly is this accomplished? In this video, we're going to focus on a biological context. Remember our idea from a previous video that biochemistry is chiral chemistry. This means that the control of configuration is extremely important in biological systems. The opposite enantiomer of, for example, an amino acid could be toxic to an organism where the natural enantiomer is essential. And so nature has to carefully control the spatial properties and configurations of the molecules that it engages with. One of the ways it does this is through reactions catalyzed by enzymes, which are nature's chiral catalysts. Let's now take a look at an example of an enzyme that distinguishes between enantiotopic groups. Glycerol is the structural backbone of triglycerides. The two hydroxyl groups on the outside have an enantiotopic relationship since the molecule includes a plane of symmetry right through its center here. The enzyme glycerol kinase is responsible for changing one of the hydrogens on one of these two hydroxyl groups into a phosphate group. And the phosphate donor is ATP adenosine triphosphate. Based on the reaction scheme shown here, the enzyme operates selectively on the right-hand enantiotopic hydroxyl and generates absolutely none, essentially nil, percent of the opposite enantiomer. How does this work? How is nature able to be so selective in the way it generates single enantiomers? This model shows the structure of the glycerol kinase enzyme that accomplishes this transformation. The active site where the actual reaction occurs includes a glycerol molecule and a phosphate so that we can get a good look at how the enzyme biases reaction at one of the two enantiotopic hydroxyl groups. Here's a far zoomed in image showing the glycerol molecule with an electrostatic potential map and surrounding bonds and atoms from the enzyme that hold this molecule in place. The hydroxyl group that actually reacts, in other words, the one whose reaction leads to the observed enantiomer is this one that I've drawn an arrow to in red. Unsurprisingly, it's very close to the phosphate group that's also complexed within the enzyme's active site. And a big part of how the enzyme accomplishes its mission of generating only this stereoisomer involves steering that hydroxyl group through intermolecular forces to get right up next to the phosphate. And so there are interactions that you can't see with other side chains from the enzyme that hold the phosphate in place as well. So part of the idea here is attractive intramolecular forces that steer them into close proximity with one another. Another important effect is steric shielding of the unreactive hydroxyl. Check out the other hydroxyl group, the enantiotopic hydroxyl group in glycerol. Where this is located in the enzyme, it has absolutely no chance of reacting with phosphate. It's engaging in a hydrogen bond with tyrosine-136, and so its hydrogen is already tied down doing that. And it's surrounded by other residues that prevent it from getting close to any sort of phosphate. On the whole, what we find is that steric shielding of the unreactive group, in other words, side chains from the enzyme sitting, simply getting in the way of the other reactant from approaching the enantiotopic group, plays an important role in addition to attractive intramolecular forces. And these are really the forces that hold the substrate in place and align the reactive hydroxyl group with the other reactant, in this case, the phosphate from ATP. This kind of control of which of a pair of enantiotopic groups reacts seems natural when the substrate of an enzyme is snuggled into its active site. But this tends to be a challenging problem for traditional organic chemists who prefer to use small molecule catalysts rather than large complicated enzymes to accomplish these transformations for reasons of cost and simplicity of synthesis and things like this. And so many organic chemists, myself included, just find nature's ability to control asymmetry just absolutely beautiful. No small molecule system can match the enantioselectivity that nature's enzymes have achieved over the billions of years they've had time to evolve on Earth.